morning. My discussion for today is Module 2, The Golden Era of Penology. First, what is penology? Penology is a branch of criminology which deals with the management and administration of offenders. So, kapag penology yung pinag-uusapan natin, ibig sabihin nun, management and administration ng offenders. Okay, kung paano nila minamanage and ina-administer yung mga offenders na pumupunta sa jail and prison. The word penology by, was coined by Dr. Francis Libier. It simply means the treatment of criminals. So, ibig sabihin ng penology is treatment of criminals. Okay? Sila yung babago sa criminal. Sila yung uh, magtitreat. Okay? Para mabago yung criminal. Kasi once na matapos na yung matapos na yung sentence niya doon sa prison, okay? So, lalabas na siya. Dapat paglabas niya maging uh, So, dapat paglabas niya mas maging mabuting or maging mabuting tao na siya. Next, the golden age of penology. The period from 1870 to 1880 was considered the golden age of penology because of the following significant events. Okay? Take note, 1870 to 1880, okay, so uh, 10 years, yan or consider na golden age of penology yan. So, let's go now for the significant events. First, the National Prisons Association in 1870 was organized in Cincinnati. So, National Prison Association is na-organize siya noong 1870 doon sa Cincinnati. Next, the first International Prison Congress was held in 1872 at London, which established the International Penal and Penitentiary Commission. And in 1875, its headquarters was established at Hague or Hage at Netherlands. So, 1872, okay, uh, doon uh, nagkaroon ng First International Prison Congress sa London, tapos na-establish yung tinatawag nating International Penal and Penitentiary Commission noong 1875 and also Nagkaroon din sila ng headquarters or nag-establish sila ng headquarters sa Hague or Hague, Netherlands. Next, the Elmira Reformatory was established in New York in 1876. I know, alam nyo na itong tinatawag nating Elmira Reformatory. Kasi this was discussed noong correctional institution ninyo and nan insti kung hindi ako nagkakamali. So, na-establish ang Elmira Reformatory noong 1876 sa New York. Then, the first separate institution for women was established in Indiana and Massachusetts. Siyempre, okay, hindi naman pwedeng magsama ang lalaki at babae sa iisang uh, prison or iisang selda. Kasi alam nyo naman na kung ano yung mangyayari. So, meron tayong separate institution for women and men. So, let's go now to correction. Correction is the branch of the administrative of the criminal justice charged with the responsibility for the custody, supervision, and rehabilitation, and rehabilitation of the convicted offender. Correction is the fourth pillar of the criminal justice system, considered as the weakest pillar of the criminal justice system. Yes, correction is considered as the weakest or weakest pillar of criminal justice system. So, correction is a din yang branch ng uh, administrative of the criminal justice. Sila ang may responsibilidad 
doon sa custody, supervision, and rehabilitation ng convicted offender. Once na napunta kasi sa prison, okay, ang correction na ang may ang bahala sa mga convicted offenders natin. So, next, institutionalized correction. The rehabilitation of offenders in jail or prison. So, kapag institutionalized correction, nire-rehabilitate yung offenders doon sa jail or yung, yung tinatawag nating prison. Doon sila nire-rehabilitate yung institutionalized correction na tinatawag natin. Next, community. Community-based or non-institutionalized correction refers to correctional activities that may take place within the community. Okay? Ito naman, kapag institutionalized sa loob ng jail or prison. Pero kapag uh, sinasabi natin non-institutionalized correction, ito naman doon sa community. Okay? Uh, gagawa uh, merong mga gagawin yung mga offenders okay para or different activities meron silang mga different activities na gagawin sa community ayun naman yung tinatawag nating non-institutionalized correction next we have rehabilitation rehabilitation is a punishment philosophy which asserts that through proper correctional intervention a criminal can be reformed into a law-abiding citizen. Yes. Okay? Kasi once na naipasok ka sa prison or jail, i-rehabilitate ka nila, babaguhin ka nila para uh, ma-reform ka into a law-abiding citizen kapag lumabas ka na doon sa prison na yon, Magiging law-abiding citizen ka na. So, ituturo. Uh, tutulungan ka in terms of your physical, emotional, and spiritual. Next. So, let's go now to purpose of punishment. Purpose of punishment, first, to segregate offenders from society. Yes, you need to segregate the offenders, okay, or yung mga convicted offenders within the society. Hindi naman pwede na naki, uh, magkakasama sila lahat doon yung gumagawa ng krimen and then yung hindi gumagawa ng krimen. Okay? Then next, to rehabilitate him so that upon his return to the society, he shall be responsible and law-abiding citizen. So, yan po yung purpose ng punishment. Okay? Kung bakit binibigyan or uh, nagbibigay ng uh, binibigyan sila ng punishment. Kasi gusto natin na paglabas nila doon sa prison, magiging law-abiding citizen na sila. Two legal, uh, two legal grounds for detaining a person. Ano ba yung legal grounds na matatawag natin para masabi natin pwede natin i-detain yung tao na yan? Una, commission of a crime. Ibig sabihin, ayan yung paggumawa siya ng krimen. Okay? Next, violent insanity or any other ailment that needs compulsory confinement in a, in a hospital. Ibig sabihin, agbagtit. Okay? Violent insanity. So, yan yung mga legal grounds na kailangan nating i-detain ang isang tao. Kapag gumawa siya ng krimen at kapag pobaliw siya. Violent insanity. Pero kapag baliw, syempre hindi naman siya pwedeng isama doon sa mga uh, preso na nandun sa uh, jail or prison. Doon po siya sa uh, hospital or, or doon sa mental hospital. Doon sila kailangang i-confine. Next! The rules on the admission, custody, and treatment of inmates. So, ito yung mga rules para ma-admit sila and syempre, uh, matignan sila. First, seek to promote discipline and to secure the reformation and safe custody of inmates. Next, shall be applied impartially without discrimination on grounds 
on grounds of race, color, sex, language, religion, or other opinion, national or social origin, property birth, or other status. Then, shall be enforced with firmness but tempered with understanding. So, dun tayo sa una, seek to promote discipline and to secure the reformation and safety of the inmate. Siyempre, once na inadmit na sila, okay, nasa sa kanila na yung custody ng inmate. So, kailangang ma-reform yung inmate at the same time, safe yung inmate doon sa custody o dun sa pangangalaga nila. Pangalawa, shall be applied impartially without discrimination. Siyempre, hindi naman po natin kailangang i-discriminate pa ang isang tao. Okay? In terms, syempre, una sa race, sa color, sa sex, kung ano ba siya, language and also religion. Kapag mus ay kapag ka uh, iglesia ni Cristo ba, hindi uh, kailangan ba natin siyang i-discriminate kapag ka Kristiyano ba, kailangan ba may pag Uh, may discrimination ba? And also, uh, national or social origin, property birth, or other status. Dapat, wala po tayong dinidiscriminate na ibang tao. Next, shall be enforced with firmness, firmness but tempered with understanding. Okay? Uh, disiplina lang. Okay? Uh... So, syempre, kailangan mong ipakita dun sa inmate na yon or dun sa mga preso na ito yung uh, rules. Kailangan yung sundin. Okay? Bigyan mo, uh, magpakita ka ng tapang, pero at the same time, maging understanding ka sa kanila. So, yan yung mga rules on the admission, custody, and treatment of inmates natin. Next, we have pre-release treatment. It is the program specifically designed and given to a prisoner during a limited period prior to his release in order to give him an opportunity to adjust himself from the uh, regimented group like in prison to the normal independent life of a free individual. So, binibigyan sila ng pre-release treatment okay, para mag makapag-adjust ulit sila. Okay, kasi uh, kailangan din, kagaya natin, kapag nagpupunta tayo sa ibang lugar, hindi naman agad-agad tayo nakikipag-usap. Kailangan muna nating mag-adjust. Kailangan muna nating uh, tignan, pakinggan kung paano sila magsalita, kung paano sila kumilos. Para alam natin kung paano natin sila i-approach ulit. Ganito din dito. Kailangan din nilang mag-adjust. Kaya meron tayong tinatawag na pre release treatment. Bago tuluyan siyang uh, lumabas doon sa community. Or bago siya tuluyang ilabas papunta sa community. So, yan yung tinatawag nating pre-release treatment. Next, institutional custody, security, and control. So, aims of institutional security first, to prevent, uh, to prevent escape, syempre, Okay? Uh, hindi naman pwede na Siyempre, hindi naman pwede na magkakaroon pa naman ng or uh, merong mga preso na tatakas pa. So, they need to prevent the escape of that prisoner or any other uh, prisoners. Next, to control entry of contrabands. Okay? Like drugs, marijuana, or any uh, contrabands na makakasama sa mga preso. Next, um, maintenance of good order. Siyempre, okay, para na sa isang uh, prison, like dito sa Ordinate at sa may BGMP, para na silang isang community. Okay? Meron na silang mga rules and regulations na sinusunod. Okay? Para maging maayos yung flow ng araw-araw nilang pamumuhay na doon sa, pri, uh, sa prison na yon. So, custody defined as the guarding of penal safekeeping. It involves security measures, locking and counting routines, uh, produces for searching prisoners under living quarters and preventions of contrabands. 
Okay, so, dito sa custody, nandito na yung guarding of penal safekeeping. It involves security measures. Siyempre, yung security ng buong uh, prison. Lacking and counting routines. Okay? Every now and then, uh, binibilang nila yung mga preso para malaman nila kung kompleto pa ba yung mga preso na yun or yung mga prisoners na yun. Reduces for searching prisoners and their living quarters and prevention of contraband. Kagaya ng sabi ko, prene-prevent uh, prene nila yung pagpasok ng kontrabando sa loob ng prison. Next, control. It involves supervision of prisoners to ensure punctual and orderly movement to, to and from the dormitories, places of work, church, hospitals, and recreational facilities in accordance with their daily schedule. Sa loob kasi ng uh, preso, okay, or correction, nandyan yung tinatawag nilang dormitories or yung tinutulugan nila, places of work, kung saan sila nagtratrabaho, church, hindi naman yung parang nandito sa labas, okay, pero meron din silang church doon. I think like, uh, para siyang isang kwarto. Hospitals, syempre, hindi yan matatanggal, and recreational facilities. Uh, minsan pa nga, doon yung mga preso, doon nila nakikita yung mga pwede pa nilang magawa. Yung mga skill nila. Ah, kaya ko palang gumawa ng kanito. Ah, kaya ko palang gumawa ng ganito. Yan yung recreational facility or recreation activity nila. Okay? In accordance with their daily schedule. Yes, merong uh, daily schedule ang mga uh, preso. Sa araw na ito, ito yung gagawin nila. Sa, uh, sa next day, ito naman yung gagawin nila. So, meron silang iba't ibang schedule. Next, contraband, alam nyo na yan, anything, anything that is contrary to prison rules and regulations. Yan po yung mga pinagbabawal. Alam nyo na po kung ano yung mga yon. Next, prison discipline. It is the continuing state of good order and behavior in prison. It includes the maintenance of good standards of work, sanitation, safety, education, personal health, and recreation. Okay, so yan yung mga ginagawa. Okay, minimaintain nila. Okay, para maging disiplinado pa rin sila. In terms of work, kailangan uh, disiplinado sila, sanitation, dapat malinis palagi safety, syempre, and also education. Yes, sa loob ng prison, okay, they have education, yung tinatawag nating AS, Alternative Learning System. Yung mga, uh, guma, yung mga nakagawa ng krimen at gusto namang ipagpatuloy yung pag-aaral nila, pwede silang mag-ALS doon. Personal Health and Recreation. Safe. Next, Prevention Discipline. Involves prompt correction of minor deviations before they become serious violations, which may be dealt with a reprimand of warning and its use when the deviation is rival due to ignorance or lack of understanding or the result, the result of careless or faulty habits. Okay, so, dito naman sa prevention discipline, okay, uh, pre prevent na nila yung mga minor deviations na nagagawa bago pa ito maging serious violations. Okay, hindi na nila pinapaabot na maging serious pa. Okay, uh, doon pa lang sa konti o doon pa lang sa minor na nagawa nilang mali, okay, uh, pre prevent na nila yon. First, doon nga sa trival due to ignorance or lack of understanding, and last, the result of careless or faulty habit. So, yan yung ibig sabihin ng prevention discipline. So, that was the end of module to discussion. So, thank you and God bless.